Today we'll be talking about publishing a Nougat package using Azure DevOps pipelines and having uh, automatic versioning uh, based on build number. Uh, that will be automatically incremented in certain capacity by Azure. Uh, we won't have to do that ourselves. So let's start with the bit of agenda. This is, by the way, my blog. And this is a blog post I wrote yesterday about this. So I'll link this below. We'll just go through that and kind of replicate what I'm doing here. So first, we'll talk briefly about the prerequisites for this. We'll then go to nugget.org and create an API key. Um, if you don't have an account on there, just create one. Uh, then we'll go to Azure DevOps and connect to Nugget feed by creating a service connection. Uh, after which we'll go right to the pipeline, uh, create a new pipeline, uh, design it from scratch and push the package th through there by running it. Lastly, we'll uh, update the API key so it's securely only accessing your single package and not all of them. So first, let's see uh, what are the prerequisites. Not that much. A solution with class library project that is ready to be packed and a repository in source control. I'm going to be using Azure DevOps. You can be using GitHub, GitLab, anything else will do. And by ready for packing, what I mean is navigate to that folder with your solution and in the address bar just type cmd and press enter that will open a command prompt in that folder in fact you will have to navigate to the class library so i just do cd test factory dot lib now in, in this folder you can see those files in there um, and just type nugget pack that will pack the the library and if you have a, a nugget package explorer i do you can install it in windows store uh, you can see the package metadata which mine is empty um, and the library itself packed correctly it looks fine to me uh, once you're happy with your package locally you can go to nugget.org and either create an account with microsoft or log in I already have an account, so I'll navigate to API keys and here you can create a new API key. So this is going to be my API key. This key doesn't really matter too much, as in the name doesn't matter. Um, leave everything as it is and then the pattern here is quite important. If you know your package name already and the, your package name will be essentially your project name if you leave things by default, make sure that package name so your project name is globally unique. If you just do open weather map API or test factory, you can be sure that this will already be taken. That's why I had to add the dot client library and here dot lib. So you can set the global pattern here to be either star, which will give access to all the packages. So um, I'm just gonna specify my own test factory dot lib. and just press create. So now I have a new API key, I can copy that key. So the next step is going to Azure DevOps, which is dev.azure.com uh, and to your project. Mine is global. And in here, project settings, service connections, and I already have one here but I'll create a new one just to show you. So you just type nugget in here, press next, use API key, paste that API key of yours first, and then you can copy that from here. This is a nugget.org um, JSON file. So this is the feed of nugget. And the name, uh, you know, you can just say nugget service connection, for example, just make it quite meaningful. So you know, you know what it is when you're accessing it from the pipeline and just press save. And now it's created. I'll uh, delete it now because um, I already have it. So next step is to create a pipeline. 
So to build a pipeline, navigate to pipelines. You can see that I already have one for test environment, but I will create one for live. I usually use the classic editor, so I'll just stick to that. And then I'll leave this as it is because these are what I need. I'll start with an empty job first. And under name, I just rename it to test factory dash live. Uh, just just the convention I'm using. Leave that as it is right now. We don't we don't care about this. And then add a few tasks. I need two .NET Core tasks. So I'll add them and then one Nugget task. The first one will be .NET pack. We want to pack the package and we want to pack the, the csproj file. This will pack everything, all the csproj files. We actually want only to pack one. So testfactory.lib. And in fact, I can just leave that as it is because this star is a wildcard. Build configuration is going to be release or debug, I don't know. Um, to be fair, it should, obviously it should be release. Um, uh, there's debug files here, but I don't know if this variable is set. It, it doesn't really matter at the moment because that's not, that's not in the scope of this. And it's packing the folder in the artifact staging directory. That's quite important. Whoops, it packs after it builds. So, it, so drag it over. So .NET build, this will build, build all the projects. You can leave that uh, in like this, or you can specify a particular project that you want to build. Uh, I could do it, but I don't really care, so I'm not gonna do it. So .NET build, and then .NET pack, we, do, we know what we would want to pack, and then .NET restore, uh, sorry, nugget restore, we change it to nugget push. Then we select the feed, and we've created the external nugget server. So we use the service connection. Um, and that should be it, technically. Notice that uh, this path here, um, there is a couple of things. One of them is it's looking in the artifact staging directory, and this is where we pack our package. So that's by default uh, out of the box working. Now, when it comes to versioning, uh, if you go, come back to .NET pack, you'll see that the pack options here, automatic versioning is off. So if you select use the build number, this is perfect for the solution here right now. But I have done it before for the test one, and it does have problems with the suffixes. So if you want to add a pre-release suffix like dash beta or dash alpha or dash um, release candidate, you can't do it. So um, it won't register it, and essentially every package will be treated as a stable package and not a pre-release one. So the workaround that I came up with is as follows. First of all, use the build number format here. Um, what I'm doing is I use major minor patch dash three release flag. Um, so that could be translated to 1.0, so this will major, minor, and then patch, uh, dash beta, for example. Now, um, there is a variable that you can use, um, and I always use it for the patch part of it, which is this. This. This is a, this is a variable that will get incremented by one every time you run the build. Um, I will remove the beta suffix because this is a live pipeline and obviously this is not needed. So this is how it's gonna look from now on. Now this variable build number format is available uh, in the pipeline as a predefined variable. So if I define a variable here called nugget package version, and set the value of it to be dollar sign build dollar sign build dot build number. It will pull that value from here with the the pre-release flag. 
So now I can, in .NET Pack Options, I can go back here and say, okay, I want to use environment variable instead of build number. Uh, and that is it. You just have to now save and queue it. So let's do it. Um, once the pipeline finishes the execution, you can investigate the Nugget pack, I think. Uh, in fact, we're just going to go to Nugget push and you can see it's trying to uh, do a put request on um, against this endpoint and it's, it's pushing the test factory dot lib 1.0.2 Nugget package um, and it's uh, successfully creating that package. So once we have confirmed the package was pushed successfully, we can navigate back to nugget.org. And here, if we go to manage packages, which I'm already here, um, your package might be unlisted right here because it needs some sort of automatic reviewing process is happening in the background. But uh, once it's published, and that should take no more than, I don't know, five minutes, it's going to appear here. And you can see that 1.03 is the version that I just deployed. And I know I just deployed 1.02, but I had to rerun the pipeline, so um, I just cut that out. So yeah, 1.03 is the version that I've just deployed and it's already live. So you can now install it through um, Visual Studio, Manage Package Manager or .NET um, or you know whatever package uh, manager you, you use. Mm, there is some... Uh, automatic documentation. So this uh, this is automatically generated. If you add a readme file, this will be uh, displayed here. Uh, all the dependencies will be displayed here. And then all the Nuggets patches or uh, GitHub repos that are using it will be here and the version history so, as well. So there is some stuff that is uh, quite useful here as well. Um, so that's it for today. Uh, thank you for uh, your attention and uh, hopefully see you soon.